Today in the post I received a little packet all the way from China and inside I've got 12 rechargeable kind of sub-C batteries. It's uh, something I ordered probably a month or two back and I'd almost forgotten about. But these are to repair and get running again a, uh, a rechargeable drill battery pack. These things normally retail for 20 to 30 quid so for the price of these, which I think is about 15-16 pounds, it's uh, a worthwhile, quick little fix. When I first took a look at this battery pack, I was worried it's going to be a, a glued, kind of sealed rim around here, and I was going to need to cut it into it to get it open. But I was pretty pleased when I spotted four screw holes on the other side. It's uh, a straightforward pack to take apart this one. Inside, you can see we've got uh, a large number of paper-wrapped cheap packs. Each cell is rated at uh, 1.2 volts and uh, 1200 uh, milliamp hours in there. The new cells I picked up are obviously the same voltage, but they are 1600 milliamp hours, so it's a little bit more. It, uh, hopefully it's not so much more that it will impact the charging system that works with it. So the task now is to carefully dismantle this any further. We've got, uh, in addition to the batteries, probably have a little temperature sensor in here that I'll need to hang on to. Other than that, it's a case of taking the new rechargeable batteries, forming them into the same shape, and uh, soldering them up. It turns out what I've actually ordered was a four-fifths sub C. You can see here the uh, size difference. It's uh, it's not a huge difference, but it's, uh, it's one fifth less in terms of dimensions, uh, at least just in length anyway. It's uh, it's a bit annoying, but considering how long these took to turn up, I'm going to carry on anyway and make a set, build the battery pack up using these uh, slightly smaller batteries. Hopefully, they'll still fit in. Okay, so we have to pack out the, this vertical height that's needed to fit within this kind of mounting here. And hopefully once that's in place, it should still function just as well as the original did. These batteries are tabs. They've got little metal tabs um, uh, kind of welded onto the, the surface. It's uh, not a good thing to try and weld directly to or solder directly to the surface of a battery because the heat's going to damage it. But these tabs are kind of ideal for that. These particular ones have come with little bits of heat shrink tubing just over the terminals. Obviously just protect during transit, but in most cases they just pull straight off. With these particular ones, all these tabs are coming out um, at the same kind of angle. Obviously when I'm stacking these together, I don't really want that. So I ha have to use a combination of soldering tab to tab and using little bits of jumper wire to kind of join between the two. These flexible tabs, are, in this particular case, they're very flexible, so you can kind of twist and bend them and point them in the right direction. So for this join over here, I can kind of double back on some of these terminals and fold them over so they touch. So unlike the first join, where I used a little piece of wire to couple them, you can actually just bend the tabs in the direction you need them to go. Okay, I've got the uh, bulk of the new battery pack fitted together here. The, this top section here I've kept loose because I'm using the wrong type of batteries. I'm going to need to get the do something with the height to get it to reach all the way to the end of this adapter here. Now the lack of height with these isn't a problem because I can have the entire thing sit further up and just bulk out the bottom here. These bits on the other hand I can't so I'm going to need to pack them out or secure them uh, like that somehow. I'm hoping the uh, plastic tubing here will help me somewhat. But before I move on to that, I need to just finish dismantling this original battery pack here. 
packs. So, you've got, so three terminal packs. You've got the two terminals for the batteries here. And you've always got a third one here which helps with the uh, charging circuit. And so it's uh, so you've got a few components in here which I need to carefully extract and fit onto the new battery pack. Okay, I've managed to free the uh, battery terminals here from the tabs on the batteries. These are kind of uh, really spot welded on, but I've been able to kind of carefully force these uh, little kind of metal tabs away from the much tougher kind of metal that makes up the battery terminals. If you kind of slowly work at it, it will get a bit mangled and free itself up. This uh, kind of second circuit I need to salvage here connects between the um, kind of sense pin on the edge of the battery pack, this one on the front, and the negative terminal of the battery. So I'm just going to finish freeing up this. I can then start attaching it into the new battery pack. The uh, sensing circuit consists of these two components. And first off, we've got a little temperature sensitive switch set at 115 degrees. And so, obviously, that's going to cut out in extreme conditions and shut down the charging. The other component is this package here. It's, uh, it's not something I recognize. It's a single kind of two pin connection. It's wrapped in this uh, slightly unusual metal package. Part number doesn't bring up anything I can spot. Um, it doesn't appear to be a diode. It's not, it doesn't have any resistance to it. Um, so yeah, unfortunately I'm stumped with that one. But either way, I've still got what I need now to uh, finish the rest of the battery. I've just got the slightly fiddly process of uh, getting these connectors back into the right housing. Also, because of this top, top point here, the positive and the negative are very, very close to touching. So when it, the, it's finally mounted, it's secured by this kind of rigid plastic housing, so they're not going to bend, they're not going to risk touching. But obviously, as I'm trying to work these in, there's a good chance of them shorting out. So what I've done is just remove one of the links down here. So that means that if it were to short, nothing's going to happen because there's no circuit for the power to flow through the battery. So, but it seems to have uh, fed in quite nicely there. Once it's got all the, the sensor wires kind of neatly tucked in, it kind of slid in quite well. I'm going to quickly try this out. So these batteries aren't fully charged, but I should at least get something from it. So there we go, seems to be functioning. At least it's wired up correctly anyway. So without the rest of the battery pack in place, I can't pull to extract this. Okay, it's out. Now the only thing remaining is the lack of height on here. As long as I push this in now, it's going to kind of bring around a bit and potentially drop within here. And so I think rather than solving the height issue, the easiest would be to make use of these uh, mounting lugs here and glue the batteries to them and secure this in. Obviously it reached the point where this then won't become repairable again, but I think in this case the uh, drill in question is old enough that it almost certainly will go before this pack will. So there it is, all put back together. Took a little bit of time fiddling around, but even with the wrong size batteries, it went together without too much difficulty. And it's almost certainly gonna be cheaper than buying a proper replacement battery.